For most people, the fact that this is one of the most expensive and exclusive 4x4s on the market is enough to sell it to them. It's also one of the biggest standing over 6 feet tall and being 16 feet long. You want road presence? Short of buying a tank, you won't get much better. The Range Rover also feels very solid, with the poor trim quality of the previous models a thing of the past, I'm glad to say. But when it comes to the interior, well, I'm in two minds. On the one hand, the interior is very solid and feels very expensive. In fact, it's more like a company boardroom than a car interior. But for me, I don't like the use of many different materials with the interior. In fact, we've counted six different colours here. Silver and black plastics, wood, aluminium, cream and leather. All very high quality, but I think it's too cluttered, especially on the move. There are other colour combinations available though, which I think would be a lot nicer. At the back, I'm glad to say that Range Rover, just like Toyota, have kept their split tailgate system. There's no lip, so there's easy access for big heavy loads, or if you've just got a little bit of shopping, well, you can throw it through the top. Sorry, lost for a moment there in the Range Rover HSE's sheer opulence and class. Now, opulence, there's a word I don't often use, but this car makes you feel that way. It really is. A classic. I think this afternoon I'll go and hunt some deer, maybe go down to the lower field and check the fences. You do really feel like the lord of the manor in this particular car. Country gent or even Premier League footballer, this car is absolute and utter status symbol. The interior is like a beautiful living room and it's just as comfortable. I can see why now people sit in fields and eat the sandwiches and these kind of things because you are that comfortable, you could stay here all day. Perhaps Range Rover have overindulged a little bit in all the gadgets. There's everything in this thing. and Sometimes you can take your mind off what you're actually doing which is supposedly driving a car. The HSE is probably the biggest car of all but you don't feel as though it's a big car when you're driving it. In fact, the more you drive it, the more confidence you have, and it gets smaller and smaller as you drive. On the highways, yeah, plenty of power and punch. You can really put your foot down with full confidence that you've got the braking capabilities to slow it down when you need. No doubt about it, the HSE is the daddy of 4x4s if you can afford the 53 grand price tag. But if you can, well then you're lord of the manor. Talking of which, I think I'm back off. Home, warm up the claret, Cuban cigar, maybe take the horse out around the paddock. Oh, I do hope they get the gravy right tonight. You can't get the help these days. For a car that handles so well on the road, you'd expect there to be a trade-off when you get on the rough stuff. But no, the Range Rover is excellent. Again, we have a switchable gearbox to keep it in low ratios for towing and steep inclines. But for going down steep hills, the Range Rover has hill descent control. You flick a switch, take your feet off the pedals, and let the car do the rest. But as we've said before, the majority of these cars, especially the top-end Range Rovers, are hardly ever going to see dry riverbeds and mountain paths. But it's nice to know you could do it if you wanted to. No doubt about it, the Range Rover is big, whatever way you look at it. In size, in cost, in fuel consumption, and in flash value. Certainly it's one of those cars where if you have to ask about insurance and fuel economy, you can't afford it. For such a big car, it's remarkably quick and pickup on the motorway for overtaking is excellent. Also on the motorway, the lack of road and wind noise is surprising. It's almost like having wheels fitted to your living room.